CES 2018 coverage is proudly powered by Amazon. Help support our content by going to PlugHitsLive.com slash Amazon. Hey guys, Scott here with Plug Hits Live, part of the Tech Podcast Network. We're here at CES 2018 at the Wireless Power Consortium booth. I've got a kitchen behind me. We'll find out about that in a second. But uh, first, go ahead and introduce yourself for me. Hi, Scott. I'm Paul Golden. I'm the Vice President of Market Development for the Wireless Power Consortium. Very good. And so <clears throat> you're the guy who's tasked with getting... Uh, new products and new partners, I would imagine? Well, that's a big part of what I do, but um, I'm also very involved in a lot of other projects that we work on, things like chief certification, which I'm going to tell you all about, and um, helping develop our, uh, some of the areas of focus for us, like the public infrastructure for wireless charging for public infrastructure, um, and then also yes, getting helping members actually better promote wireless charging in general. Sure. Now, obviously we know since CES last year, some things have changed. We had we had the last holdout <laughs> that wasn't supporting any wireless charging uh, join the consortium and add it to their most recent devices, obviously being Apple. And how has that changed the the organization? Uh, the world has completely changed since <laughs> September 12th. So once Apple said our devices, iPhone 8, 8 Plus, iPhone 10, were all going to be Qi certified, that meant that there was one single standard. Everybody kind of fell in line at that point. And that sort of opened up the floodgates. And one way to look at it for us is our membership since that time, 17 weeks, we've grown by nearly 70%. So we've gone from about 220 members before Apple to now 385 members today. That's, that's huge growth because obviously the Wireless Power Consortium has been around for a couple of years leading up until September. Yes. <laughs> and so for it to have gained 70% in just a couple of weeks is crazy. Well, it's been, and the, and the growth has really been across a lot of different types of companies. So it's not just small companies that have come on board, but Google has joined, wow. uh, Xiaomi has joined, but we've also seen a lot of smaller companies that have been in the industry and have been producing wireless chargers that were not certified, okay. and now they're joining and sending their products through certification, which is exactly what we want to, hap to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I know there's a number of <laughs> a, a number of manufacturers like on Amazon and uh, Newegg and stuff like that that produce Qi compatible <laughs> yeah. devices, but and they're usually inexpensive, but they're never certified. And for me, that's obviously a concern. Well, it's a big concern for us as well, because one of the reasons why we exist is to make sure people have a good experience with wireless chargers. So we want to make sure that they're safe, that they're reliable, that they're energy efficient, and that they're interoperable. So I can use my charger and phone interoperably with any other Qi device. Um, very consistent. So having these companies go through and now get their devices certified, and as an example of that, we've had 100 new devices certified in the last three weeks. So a lot of companies sending their products through certification today. And what we're doing, we started a campaign about six months ago where we're going out and talking to retailers to tell them the story about certification so they know what it is, why it's important, and the risks they're taking on if they try to sell uncertified products. And basically it's to help them protect their brands you know, so they don't have any kind of issues in selling those products. Um, and it's starting to see, we're starting to see an impact from that. We're starting to have these new companies now join WPC, send their products through certification because the retailers that they sell through or the distributors they sell through are telling them, hey, if you want to be sold with us, you've got to be certified. Well, that's, that's a good thing for everybody. The consumer wants a genuine product <clears throat> because it's going to be safer. The retailer wants it to be a genuine product because you don't want the consumer to have something go wrong and then come back to the retailer and be pissed because something you sold me ruined my phone. <laughs> and then and then the, the manufacturers have got to want it because, you know, it, it gives them legitimacy. Yes, and, and it's a... It's a potentially confusing thing for consumers because you'll see a lot of products that'll say they're Qi compatible or Qi compliant, works with Qi, Qi enabled. 
And for a consumer, I don't understand, is that the same thing as cheese certified? So there's an education process here that our retailers and member companies are helping us with to make sure people understand the difference between those things, because those things don't mean cheese certified. No, they do not. They, they usually mean they're $5, but there's a reason why they're $5. Right. Absolutely right. It does cost a little more to make a certified device, but you want to make sure it's safe. And, and we know this category is safe. We've sold millions of chargers for years and years without any uh, issues. Um, but if you have people who are using the cheese specification, which they can use because it is an open standard, but if they go out and use the cheese specification and don't use, put in all the different safety aspects we have in here or the products aren't interoperable with other devices, um, consumers are not going to have a good experience and that's going to impact the category for everybody. Sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, you don't want you don't want the whole industry to be damaged by a company that sells a lot of product but starts damaging phones. That's right. That's right. So what does it what does it take if if you're a manufacturer, what does it take to be a member and to get it a product certified? Well to get a product certified, first of all you have to be a member. And uh, becoming a member is very simple. We have four different levels of membership, uh, and you can go to the website and you can see all the details about what they cost and what they what each membership level is involved. Um, there aren't any real special requirements for membership. It's very quick. You send us your application. Generally, in about two days, we can turn around and say, "Congratulations, you're a member." Okay. Uh, then, once you're a member, you can send thing products through certification. You send the products to, we have outside laboratories. We have 13 outside laboratories throughout the world. Uh, so if you're in China, you can send them to a laboratory in China. If you're in the US, there's one here. So um, you send them wherever you want to send them. We don't own the laboratories. They're independent. We don't tell you which ones to send them to. Uh, they actually compete with each other. So you might want to contact several of them and say, you know, how much is it going to cost to go through certification? What's the timeline? That sort of thing. I like that you've created a market for certification. That's great. Yeah, yeah we, maybe we make some money out of this. I hadn't <laughs> thought about that. But uh, so you send that out. Generally, it takes about three weeks to go through the certification testing. And we test the products for compliance to make sure they're fully compliant with the specification. And then we also test them through interoperability. So we will literally take your product and test it against every other Qi device in the market that exists. Uh, so that takes a while. Um, but it makes sure that consumers have that experience that we want them to have with it. And the only time it takes a little more than three weeks would be if there's something, some issue that's found in the product and it has to be, it has to go back to the manufacturer, fixed, and then resubmitted. So, so long as everything works out, <laughs> it's, a, it's about a three week process. But if something doesn't pass certification, obviously it'll take a little longer. That's right. And you'd want that to happen. You want to make sure that it does follow all the specifications. Now, every year we see some new stuff start showing up uh, with the standard. There's always work being done. It's not, it's a standard, we're done. You're always adding new stuff, new power. Uh, what have we got going on new this year? Well, several things. One is we're showing some of the, in the basic Qi standard, we're going to see more devices in the 7.5 to 10 watt range today. Our specification goes up to 15 watts. So eventually, phones will all start to move up that chain up to that 15 watts. Outside of the Qi standard, though, we have two other standards we're looking at developing right now. And we've got some prototypes back here um, that you know, consumers can take a look at. Anybody coming here to the show could look at. One is a mid-range power standard. It'll go up to 200 watts. Okay. And that'll charge laptops, drones, robots, power tools, so larger consumer electronic items. Okay. And then we have one that's a quite a bit higher power that goes up to 2,400 watts that's specifically for kitchen applications. Okay. So you see we have some, some kitchen products here um, where the charger is placed under a countertop, uh, put it under a table, it becomes your cooking surface. Um, you can cook with this. Um, it, it, the neat thing about it to me is that you can talk about precision control of cooking. You can use with your phone or a tablet, you can send information to that cooker to say, if I need to cook something here for exactly three, uh, 20 minutes at 325 degrees, I can take my phone, send that information, and it cooks exactly that way. So, so you don't end up with a situation where you accidentally 
uh, cook something for way too long and fill your house with black smoke. So I left it and it was boiling and I didn't realize that I should have turned the heat down so it, it won't do that. Plus, it's really functional in terms of utilizing space. So that countertop that you're using to cook on, when I'm finished cooking, I can just move that thing over or take it off the countertop. It's barely warm. You're not going to burn yourself. Um, if I want to put something over it, a plate, a serving dish, whatever, it realizes that that's not the appliance, so don't turn on the power. So you don't have to worry about that. You can wash it. The device itself is uh, washable. You can stick it in the sink and clean the things off. So it's. Um, I think we're going to see some really interesting applications in the kitchen area. And when you think about things like smart homes and smart kitchens, this fits right into that. I've uh, obviously we've been talking with the Wireless Power Consortium for a while, and the the thing that I see is a kitchen that doesn't have to have a dedicated stovetop, so that you can have uh, the space is multi-use for especially for a small kitchen like what we've got behind us here. And you're going to see a lot more smaller home units, not only in the U.S., but if you go overseas, uh, you know, in Asia, for instance, kitchens are a lot smaller. So space is really a premium. And to be able to take a, a countertop and, or a table and have multiple functions for that table and countertop is really efficient for those, that living space. Sure, because you could, you could use it with a, a, a compliant uh, pan and then take the pan off and put... A mixer right there yeah. in the same spot and reuse it then when, when you're done it could even be an eating surface right. then you can eat right there and then you clean it off and use whatever you want for it but the key thing to think about here and the reason why we're involved in this is you have to have a standard right. we want this to be just like chi uh, where any device any chi device works with any other chi device in the kitchen you want to be able to have choices so that all right it's all the same standard um, installers can decide who they want to install. Um, consumers can decide which appliance do I want to buy and from which brand. And that's how that market will develop. Because with, with phones and the Qi standard, you can put a, a Samsung phone and a Nokia charger and nobody cares about anything because it all works together and to have that capability. Because we've seen some kind of one-offs in this space in the kitchen and there's a, a laptop solution out there that's a one-off, but to have a standard that you can have an Acer charging dock and an HP laptop and be good to go. Yeah, if you don't have that standard, it's very limiting for consumers. Consumers want choices, and this is gonna give them those choices. Absolutely, so obviously there's, there's time on that. We're not gonna see that in February. <laughs> I, I wish we were, because to me I get very excited about it, but it's, um, it's the, the standards are being developed and we haven't announced the time yet. It's really complex developing a standard. It's much more complicated to develop a standard than it is to create a, a new product, you know, where you can be pretty certain this product's going to take me 18 months to create, and I know the stage gate process I have to go through. Standards are much, much more complicated. Because you've got you've to make sure that it serves all of the needs and some of those needs you may not know yet. That's right, sir. So, so we're not, we haven't given a date out for when the standards will be available. Um, as it gets closer to the finishing date, our members, and we have a number of members who are getting involved in this kitchen area. We've got products here from, uh, prototype products here from Philips and from Hire right now, or two of our member companies. Um, those member companies get that quick information, that inside information on the standard, so they can start commercial development even before the standard's actually issued. That way, when you say, this is what the kitchen standard is, they could have, if they wanted to, they could be ready with a product at the announcement. They could, at a minimum, they're farther down the road in production than anybody else. So it's, a, it's an incentive for a lot of companies. If you're a company that's involved in the kitchens and want to get involved in the kitchens of the future, it's a good incentive for you to join the Wireless Power Consortium. Sounds good. Now, if people want more information about the Wireless Power Consortium and the current Qi standard, how can they get that? Best place would be to go to our website, wirelesspowerconsortium.com, and they should be able to find anything they need there on that website. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. For continuing CES 2018 coverage, stay tuned to pluggitslive.com slash CES.